Good morning and welcome to our worship this third Sunday in Easter. We're so glad that you could be with us. Just a couple of announcements before we begin our service. Um, just a reminder that we will be having outdoor monthly worship uh, again next Sunday, April 25th, will be our next Sunday outdoors. And a special treat, the kids will have Sunday school in the woods. So bring your families and Reverend Guimon and some of his helpers will have a special time of Sunday school formation during our outdoor worship this coming Sunday, April 25th. We will be outside again on May 23rd and again on June 13th. And in the meantime, we'll continue to live stream as we gradually move towards having an indoor service uh, with social distancing and masks and a reservation system that will be coming once it starts getting too warm and perhaps when those cicadas start really coming out of the grass. So we'll see when we get indoors, but probably early this summer, we will be worshiping together inside. Not quite as we remember, but we're getting there. Cookies and Complin with Lemonade is tonight uh, with our youth and families and anyone who would like to gather outdoors for a short and energetic and family-friendly worship service. That's tonight at five. And in keeping with our Earth Day themes and activities this week, the kids will be having a chance to do some planting with some seeds and little containers and dirt that they can take home and plant in their gardens. I do want to thank our team of folks who helped expand our giving garden yesterday, Reverend Guimont and uh, Mark Duvall and Carter Duvall, Sam and Chuck Lakin and Chris Camello who organized much of it with getting the dirt delivered. And we now have some new beds out back where we can be planting more fresh vegetables that we can share with our neighbors who have need for fresh veggies as we get into the summer. So thank you for that. This whole week will be a continuing opportunity to give thanks for God's good creation. So do check the E! News for all of the opportunities throughout the week to participate in a Zoom lecture about our beehives out in the back, um, or the bluebird boxes, or a special um, video about mushrooms and fungi that Mary Wharton is going to offer. Um, as well as next Saturday, we will have an event here on the Meditation Trail. Our Sunday Adult Forum comes back next week. We're using Nadia Bowles Weber book, Accidental Saints. So take a, take a look at that first three chapters. Next Sunday, we'll regather with our Adult Forum, but we will have coffee hour today at 11. So lots happening in this season of Easter as we turn the corner towards the spring and then the summer season and what our new normal looks like as we continue to find our way out of this pandemic. Let us pause for a moment and prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive with the Holy Spirit in the 
God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers, in this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 4, found in your bulletin. Let us read it responsively by whole verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will be has not yet been revealed. What we do is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. 
Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Let me repeat something. Amy said this morning as we're checking the mics behind the scene, please tell me when to stop if I'm too long. Uh, sisters and brothers in Christ, last Saturday, the 10th, I was asked by Susan's class at Vitius uh, to celebrate Eucharist for the class retreat they had here on our property. Susan asked me to give a few minutes reflection I agreed, and I wrote something on the first reading they chose from Ezekiel, which says, a new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from, you, from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I remember I said that the flesh in heart of flesh does not have the same weight as the New Testament term for flesh does. In the New Testament, flesh is sometimes portrayed, or let's say, let's say interpreted as corrupt or fallen, but not in the Old Testament context. Flesh for Ezekiel is no more something to flee from or to escape in order to become more spiritual. Instead, instead the very new heart God will give us is a heart of flesh. And surprisingly, Dr. Lisa Kembo, who was leading the retreat, had them do a special and deep reading on Romans 8, a chapter which always taken out of context to do harm, to condemn, and to push people away, making them think that they are not worthy because of their bodies. I and many others were surprised that the retreat was sort of flow in that direction. And it occurred to me that this Easter, this very Easter 2021, seems to converge toward the theme of flesh and bones, our bodies, to remind us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, as it is written in Psalm 139. I continue with the same idea because today's gospel is undoubtedly teaching us something about our bodies. We have now, and about the body we have now, and the new body we will have after resurrection. Who does not ask, how will we be after we die or after the resurrection? It's a perennial question. Will we be able to feel the same way we feel today? The senses we have now, how they will work? How will our morphology look like? So many questions. Let me tell you, I don't have the answers to them. But following what Jesus did after his resurrection, I may say one thing, we will be able to eat. Yes, for those of you who are good cook, I imagine you will have your apron and utensils ready for you. 
I was never thought to link the resurrection of Jesus with food. Yet, food becomes another element that clears our doubts, convincing us that Jesus is really alive. He is not a ghost, but he is risen from the dead with a body, a body that eats. At the beginning of Christianity, there were many schools of thoughts discussing the identity of Jesus. Some of them thought that Jesus was not human and his body was simply an illusion, uh, an appearance. Others thought that God couldn't take human form and that Jesus was simply a regular man who was favored by God to do miracles. But our Christian belief tells us that God cannot be put in a box and God can do whatever God wants. God takes human form in Jesus Christ. God lived among us through Jesus. He was hungry, tired, upset, also happy. And he ate some good and delicious food. So what we call food carries a richness of that, that we have to master because we are, above all, a being who eats. The human person is composed of both body and soul. That's what today's appearance of Jesus is telling us. It is, it is, if it is only body, it is just a corpse ready to be buried. If it's only soul, then it must be a ghost. A human being is both body and soul. Therefore, we cannot and we should not dichotomize the human person. After his resurrection, Jesus shows us that he is not a ghost or a spirit without a body. Jesus is telling us not to dichotomize him, to separate the divine Jesus from the human Jesus, the bodily Jesus from the spiritual Jesus. And yes, Christians today or oh, forevermore tend to prefer a spiritual Jesus to the flesh and blood Jesus. But an over-spiritualized vision of Jesus misses the point What's the point? He desires that we touch him, that we contemplate his five wounds, and that we eat not only some nachos or some good sandwich as we eat in the retreat, but also to eat his body and drink his blood. That's when and only when we can really sing, taste, and see, taste, and see the goodness of the Lord. This is one of the message Luke, as a doctor, wants us to understand. For Luke, the empty tomb is important, but food shared around a table is so crucial for the resurrection that it makes it at the center of his gospel. If a high point of your Easter celebration was a big family, big family meal, I think you got the point. So for Luke, Jesus does not first call them to the empty tomb because doubt might still be in the hearts. Instead, Jesus is calling them to the place where bread is broken and food is shared. Luke challenges us to think of Easter in terms of dinner, in terms of food, the breaking of the bread and its importance. Luke reports earlier in his gospel an account where Jesus was opening the minds of the crowd on John the Baptist and Jesus himself. Eating food was the main connector. Jesus said, uh, Jesus said and Luke reports, 
For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look, a gluten, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. This is the human Jesus. And even after resurrection, Jesus is still teaching us something about his humanity. That the flesh, the body, is not something that needs to be despised or loathed as it was something understood in the beginning of Christianity. The body is not some sort of useless thing that we leave behind, but is an integral part of our identity. And whatever form we think our next body will take, today's gospel reminds us that it will be something that we can touch, that we can see. This is powerful, what Jesus said to them. Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that, I am, that it, it is I myself. Touch and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Still, the disciples can't believe their eyes. They can't believe their senses with which they see and touch and listen to Jesus. And Jesus calls out under the sense, the taste, Jesus' taste. And it is written, while in the joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. How do you feel worshiping a God who can eat? How do you feel worshiping a God who is interested in your dinner? How do you feel worshiping a God who can say, oh, wow, this smells good. What are you making? Fried chicken? Vegetables? Oh, let me taste. Wow, that's too spicy. Oh, that's not spicy enough. Jesus asked for something to eat a piece of fish, and they stared. Jesus, once dead, was now sitting in front of them, eating fish, linking his fingers, probably. And when Asians taste something that is good, they say, hmm, Liban. Betsy knows that. <laughs> that means, hmm, it's good. Probably Jesus was saying the same thing or similar. While today's gospel reminds us that Jesus also has appetites, it also reminds us that Jesus is asking for all types of food. And because we worship a God who can eat, that means we worship a God who can be hungry. And if God is hungry today, God is not hungry for some good hamburger or some soup or some chili, but God is hungry for justice and peace. God is hungry to see justice roll down like a river and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. With all the violence and we have heard this week and all that is happening in the world, yes, God is hungry for peace and justice. We are hungry for peace and justice. God already gave us all the necessary tools to work for a better society, a better world. God longs that we make room for justice, that we feed the hungry, that we uplift the weak, and we transform our communities to reflect the peace brought by the risen Christ. We have bodies, but with souls, so we are not corpses. We have souls, but, but with bodies, so we are not ghosts. We are human beings, men and women created by God 
and redeemed by the risen Christ. Let's honor our whole self in order to be able to honor with dignity every human being. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embody, it can embody repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Creating God, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration and empower us to be wise stewards of all that you've entrusted to us. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people, holding before you our President Joe and Governor Ralph. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially Mark, Adam, Kim, Spencer, the Ashmore family, Brayson, Bob, Liz, Bill, Desiree, Karen, David, Stephanie, Jack, Bruce, Bob, and Carolyn. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. Loving God, you overflow with grace upon grace. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays, especially Laura Howerton, Lauren Odom, Cynthia Luganbeal, and anniversaries, especially Glenna and Jim Martins. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. Redeeming God, it has been a painfully and particularly violent week in the life of our nation and world. We are reminded of the brokenness and the otherness that tears at the threads of your beloved community. Receive the dead, comfort the grieving, inspire the silent, embolden the just. May our prayers move us to work for accountability and justice that in our day we may see your peace. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember all of our loved ones who have died and those who have given their lives in service to our country. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, O oh Lord, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As it is the season of Easter, we will take a rest from our confession, knowing that we are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, who has died for those sins. And we will move instead to the Lord's Prayer, the prayer Jesus taught his disciples and friends. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.